I'm not an accidental activist. My involvement in supporting and advocating for and protecting others' rights was not born out of circumstance. It's embedded in my DNA. My parents were starving artists, and for a time we lived in a commune. That's what my mother called it. My mother dedicated her life to community and service and was passionately involved in the Vietnam and anti-war civil and women's rights movements. When I was a child, she helped organize a peace rally that Martin Luther King attended. And I got to stand beside him with the words, stop the war, kill no more, painted on my bare chest. And in that moment, even as a little girl, I felt a part of something greater than myself. At age 10, I was literally a flower child at many anti-war and peace rallies and concerts like Woodstock, creating space and, and visibility for marginalized people was and will always be my normal. And like so many, I've been part of the pursuit of peace and harmony for all living beings for many decades. As a political person, and some of you may know me for my part in amplifying Tarana Burke's Me Too movement. As one of the first women to come forward and break the silence about Harvey Weinstein's sex crimes, I was driven to trust and help other women come forward because collectively we were an unstoppable force. Their silence and pain became mine and our shared experiences bonded us together in sisterhood and solidarity. But this was far from my first time being involved with the movement. Early in my acting career, Jane Fonda encouraged me to continue to use my platform in Hollywood to lobby for bills and do the hard work, all hands on deck, just like my mother did. I have fought against sexual assault, gender discrimination, racism, sex trafficking, and for our environment and the transgender community. I'm also an empath, which means I was born with this ability to feel other people's pain. When someone hurts, we empaths hurt too. Like, like it's, it's, it's a part of us. During the past year, I've been thinking and feeling what it's like to be a highly sensitive person during this unprecedented time in history when we have all globally shared a traumatic experience. Could community Empathy possibly be how we recover and, and re-enter a world that is more compassionate? Those ideas raised more questions for me about how and why we should elevate our collective consciousness. Is, is empathy an inherited trait? If not, how can we cultivate it? How do we move? toward a world that puts value on, on empathy and what would be its impact on us personally and globally if that was possible. Recent research by Dr. Michael Banasi, a professor of psychology at Goldsmiths and his postdoctoral researcher, Dr. Natalie Bowling, discovered only one to 2% of the world's population identify as empaths. That, that doesn't mean other people dissociate from people's feelings. You see, empaths are highly sensitive people and feel way too much. On the flip side, narcissists feel way too little. So it seems mindful empathy lives somewhere in, in the space between the two. Cultivating this practice, is, is it's not instinctive. It takes work and it takes intention. It's about seeking balance, being kind and loving to yourself so you can be present in the moment and act as a compassionate neighbor. 
They say most empathy comes from our learned behavior, our environment, and found women to be more empathetic than men. Okay. <laughs> this research suggests we can train ourselves to have empathy by taking deliberate and measured steps to feel more and do more for others. If we've learned nothing else in the last year, it's that humans need each other. Not just our families, our partners, our coworkers, but we need people we don't know. Wearing masks taught us what it felt like to live with the absence of a smile from a stranger. Keeping a six foot distance between us and another person made us want to stand closer to each other. And we now know how much we all need to be hugged. As children, we're taught to see ourselves as a small but essential part of the community ecosystem and be accepting of difference. Don't judge a book by its cover, by try walking a mile in someone else's shoe. But by the adulthood, when no one is reminding us to lead with kindness, our attention shifts to how can we be different and better than others to get ahead? To get ahead, we must stand apart. The late humanitarian Fred Rogers, who taught millions of children how to respect and love one another, dedicated his life to spreading compassion and helping our community heal during challenging times. He said, sometimes all it takes is one kind word to nourish another person. Think of the ripple effect that can be created when we nourish someone. One kind, empathetic word has a, a, a wonderful way of turning into many. When you think back on the moments that shaped you into the person you are today, whether it was the music playing in your home, a teacher believing in you or discouraging you, or, or a neighbor coming in to help at just the right time. You know those experiences and sounds and feelings stay with us forever. They're familiar and intuitive and leave handprints on our psyche that are sometimes joyful and sometimes very painful. We unconsciously carry those feelings of connection of what lights us up into our careers, we choose and how we raise our families and the ways we interact with the world. The activism I, I do, the path I followed, are from those childhood imprints. It's what fuels me and also keeps me up at night. People tell me to be less political and stay off the news and social media, but they don't realize that I can't because it's a part of who I am to be part of what's going on in the world. It would be far easier to think only of myself, but I, I can't imagine that. When we, we really take the time to know ourselves before we set out to help others, we can show up as the best version of ourselves and be of service and active listeners and be fully present in the moment. If we don't take the time, it can be really hard to help other people. You're probably familiar with the phrase, no man is an island, but the original 400 year old John Don poem speaks to the, the divisiveness we're experiencing right now in our society. Separatism, it's not new. It dates back to our society's origins. The good news is that being stuck inside our homes during the pandemic was a once in a lifetime opportunity to reflect on the collective suffering of others and look inward and, and find alternative ways to experience human connection. As a society, we are slowly waking up together and engaging in conversations about injustices that were always there, but easier to ignore. And now there is more transparency about those who maintain 
a more than six foot distance from people they don't know or understand. But here's the thing, through the fear, the confusion, and the anxiety, the real call to action for recovery is community empathy. John Don says, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. If we replace mankind with humankind, the words describe exactly where we are today and the grave consequences of apathy and hate born out of fear that we are facing. If we cannot communicate with each other and make empathy a priority in our lives, we're going to end up alone with our limited thoughts and circumstances. We will be making a choice to remain isolated in ignorance. And, and when we do this, we disconnect from humanity. We need to remember what heals us. Some, something as simple as engaging in, in short conversations with strangers can make us feel a greater sense of belonging and happiness. It, it has been studied. It's a human bonding ritual. In the last year, those childhood lessons returned. Check on your friends, help a neighbor in need, volunteer where you can. We posted signs of gratitude for our essential workers on our lawns and our windows and social media accounts. Everything became a communal effort. We, we got through this because we did it together. So maybe we can start there by not forgetting what we just went through when the world shut down. Let's point ourselves in the direction that supports love and humanity and know that we're leaving behind handprints on a, on a path to a kinder, more inclusive, peaceful, loving, empathetic world.